was listening to some music while we uh, wait for people to come in. Uh, the time now is five past two. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice day today. I'll turn you around to look at the weather outside. Beautiful, eh? Beautiful. Okay, come back. Uh, so my husband just finished doing the lawns and he's gone to have a rest now and it, it's beautiful outside. Um, to just listening to Altie again. You know, I always play her because she has such a beautiful voice. If you have any um, songs that you would like us to play in the beginning of our lives, then send them through. Please let me know what they are and I'll play them. Okay? Mm, I just love it when I um, listen to uplifting music. It kind of like relaxes my nerves before we come on and invites an uh, amazing spirit. Okay? Um, Oh, welcome to all. I, I know that there are a few new people that have come on board. This actually this week. Um, so just welcome. And if you are, if you have people in mind who, who you think would benefit from um, listening to scriptures every day, then, you know, add them to the page. You're most welcome to. Um, yeah, just think of somebody who could benefit from uh, following our, our daily lives. Who could benefit? Come on. Tell me, um, I'm sure you had some friends, some families who just need that little spark in their day. Add them to the page. Okay. Um, yeah, first thing I'd like to talk about is, um, just like yesterday, I, I did ask um, if anyone had any ministry and experiences. If you don't know what a ministry and experience is, it's just an a, experience where someone has done something kind for you or you have done something kind to you someone else um yeah, something uplifting to share with us okay so if you have any experiences please let me know and um share them with us uh i just wanted to say i'm just looking for my notes at the moment while i'm trying to warm up to um uh you know go through the live today um okay i'll just read these notes first Okay, through this journey, we have been able to give hope to others in some small way. Um, that's true. There are some people who have um, been following the page for some time and um, they are doing really well as a result. And I know who they are. I know who they are and I am seeing their progress and I think they are all amazing. I mean, I think you're all amazing. I absolutely do. And I think if you can just... I don't know, when you have a desire for change or you, you just want to do better and, you know, in some small way this is helping you, then I just think it's amazing. I see the miracles. I see the blessings from doing that. I see the blessings in other people's lives from doing it. And I'm very grateful for the guidance of the Spirit that helps us to, you know, to get through this daily. Oh. It's just amazing that you can share something uplifting to everybody instead of like be lost in all the the, the, the noise of the world, you know? Just somewhere you can go for peace. Um, yeah. So we got, we've been going for like nearly three months now, I think. Belinda, do you know? Yeah, I think it's about three months. I have, I've lost count. Um, but I just think there are just so many people that we can reach out to and minister them, to them in some way by um, spreading this good news, spreading the, the gospel, um, sharing scriptures with others. Anyway, go by the Spirit. If you think can think of someone who would benefit, then please feel free to add them to the page. You don't need my permission. This is not for me, you know, this is for anyone and everyone who wants to learn. And um, I'm not the only teacher here too, by the way. I like to think that each one of us here has something to contribute. Um, whatever it is. You know, 
whatever it is. I think we're all here as teachers too. Um, yeah, and this is a place where you can, you know, come to not feel judged, but to learn and to share and edify each other. Um, I just really love this space here. I really enjoy it, and I look forward to to coming on every day for a shy person, man. I tell you, I don't really like going um, shy, but this, I mean going shy, going live, but this has, experience is teaching me. Um, there's nothing to be ashamed of, especially if it's something that you really love and enjoy and believe in, then, you know, what is the shame in doing this? Um, there is no shame. Anyway, um, I'll give you the tip for today. Um, Oh, actually, before we, we go on the tip, please feel free to tell me about your ministering experiences. That's one. And the other thing I'd like to know is what truths have you learned this week by following, um, come follow me this week. You know, what are some of the things that have, um, that, what are some of the things that stand out to you about, you know, the things that we've been reading about and come follow me. In your personal study and, and following the lives, just something small, you know, anything. What have you learnt this week? You know, that has impressed you, okay? Um, I've, I've just felt a lot of things in the chapters we've been reading this, this week. It's just beautiful things, amazing things. I'll touch on a couple uh, before we go into the reading and um, and we'll also just discuss things after the reading too. Um, the tip is, okay, the Spirit will tell you the, the truth of all things. So as we go through the live today, your tip is to try and listen to the Spirit as I read and listen for the things that the Spirit tells you are true. Um, even if it's one thing or, you know, two things as we read, if you're reading with your scriptures, then just highlight those things and please share it with me. Um, you don't have to give me too much detail. Maybe just tell me the verse uh, or the word or, yeah, anything, just simple. Uh, we have no verses. Okay. Um, just another point too is when you do learn things by the Spirit, then you um, try and ponder those things in your mind and in your heart. You know, give yourself some time to think about them and really try and like figure out, make sense of it. You know, teach yourself, make sense of those things that impress you today or have impressed you over the week. And as you do that, maybe share your experiences of what you've learned as you have pondered um, these things, these truths that you are learning this week, okay? Um, oh, also, thank you for those who those comments that have come through from the live yesterday. I really appreciate the beautiful stuff coming out. It was a beautiful live yesterday, beautiful. Um, and the miracle of what happened was just, it's amazing. So thank you to those who, who did actually watch the live and feel impressed to share. Um, I'll go back in there later on and, and have a look at those comments and um, reply, okay? And if you haven't had, had time to, to watch it, just go in and have a look. Anytime, in your own spare time, is this okay? You don't have to follow the live. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay, uh, just another thing before we go into the um, reading, we don't have any verses from Come Follow Me to you know, to cover. Um, instead, I'm going to give you an, a challenge to try and find at least one truth. One truth by the Spirit. And then post your one truth in the live, okay? Um, anything, anything at all. But practice makes perfect. Um... Right. Um, okay, I think it's time to say our prayer. 15 minutes, good. Actually, it wasn't 15 minutes, it was 10 minutes. 
Um, but if you, if you do have um, um, an experience, uh, uplifting experience, <laughs> actually I'll share, I'll share one with you, okay? So this afternoon my husband went to mow the lawn and he doesn't bother anyone when he does his work. He, you know, he'll do it on his own. He doesn't really call for anyone to come and help him. Um, and he doesn't complain. If I haven't cooked anything for him, he doesn't complain either. Uh, he'll just go making something to eat and stuff like that. Well, I saw him out there doing the work and I thought maybe this is a chance that I can minister to him. And you know what? I did take the opportunity to minister to him. He, he doesn't expect any meal made for him after doing work, but I wanted to do something nice for him. And so I went and cooked some lunch for him. Not just any lunch, it was, a, it was pretty decent lunch. Um, and it was just a thank you to say, I appreciate the work you know, that he's done. Just enough to tell him that, you know, maybe I should be doing, you know, more to help him or to render service to him. So that was my little um, ministering experience today. And I'll try to do more. <laughs> I, get a, I get quite lost in doing service for my kids and I think it's good for me to do it for my husband too. What do you think? Yes. Okay, so let's have our prayer and then I'll go into our reading and then we can enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. You know, go out and do something. All right. Oh, just when this song comes on, I like this song. I'll listen to it a little bit, okay? Let's say the prayer. I could listen to that all day. All right, let's have prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this wonderful opportunity to be here today. We thank thee, Father, for this wonderful use of technology. We thank thee, Father, for the beautiful scriptures that we are able to read daily. And we grateful, Father, for the spirit that we are able to feel, to teach us and guide us through these um, things that we will read today. Help us to find truth. Help us to be inspired by the things that we read. And help us to understand and apply them in our daily lives. Uh, we are mindful of those who uh, may be experiencing hard times. And we pray for a blessing upon each one. Um, each of those who are in need. And help us to be mindful of them today. And to reach out in love and compassion to those who are in need. We're grateful, Father, for all our blessings and grateful for watching over us and keeping us safe and help us to feel thy spirit and remember our Saviour. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me get my notes. All right. Let's see. Where's my scriptures? Okay. So we are doing Hinnaman chapter 6 today. The Rock of Our Redeemer is pretty much the topic for the whole week in Today, um, it's kind of like, uh, anyway, as we go through, I'll explain it to you what, what my impressions are. But to me, I think that chapter is all about what we see in our day, you know, what we are seeing in the news, in the media. <sighs> yes, very, mm, not scary, I just say it's, um, it's an eye-opener. How, how about that? It's an eye-opener. Um, so, I do need to read something here. Hinnaman chapter 5. Okay, so something from Hinnaman chapter 5 we, we kind of like missed. Um, we didn't touch on it enough, actually. So, I'll get, if you've got the Come Follow Me manual, it's just a little bit about Hinnaman chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, and I'll read it to you. And I, I like, I wanted to bring this up today because I think it is quite relevant for, especially for the rising generation, people who have got special names who are named after people either in scriptures or named after people who are quite special in our families okay so this is what it says um so from the come follow me manual it says Helaman chapter 5 verse 6 to 7 look in the scripture um it says there's a quote here president george albert smith's deceased grandfather george a smith appeared to him in a dream and asked quote 
I would like to know what you have done with my name, close quote. President Smith responded, quote, I have never done anything with your name of which you need be ashamed, close quote. So it's kind of like saying that um, he really hasn't done enough. Um, enough, you know, when you're named after someone who isn't honored his name not, um, enough. Does that make sense? So in the story, in the chapter, it's um, Nephi and Lehi, and um, Helaman has asked them to remember their names and to live by them and honor them, okay? And so um, the thought came to my mind, who are you named after? And what are you doing to honor the name that you have been given? Um, I have, I don't know what comes to your mind as I talk about these things, about being named after someone and whether you have honored them. Um, and I think Nephi and Nehi, they, because they had an understanding, they knew who their forebearers were of this name because their father taught them. You know, they understood. And so they kind of like liken themselves to, you know, the, those that they have been named after. And my question is, do we do that today? Do our children actually know who they are named after? Do they understand who they are named after? And how does that impress upon them in their daily lives? That they are named after special people. For me, I'm, I'm kind of like my... My, my, my actual full name is not Angela. My um, first name is not Angela. My full name is Mata Angela Araia Rima. So Mata, I'm named after my, uh, my auntie who passed away when she was only a teenager. I don't honor her name at all because I don't really know much of her. Angela, I'm named after a matron. That's what I heard. Um, but the name Arai is my grandmother's name, and um, she was an early pioneer of the church um, in the Cook Islands. And you know what? Sometimes I just feel that she is close to me, um, and she is near, and she kind of like guides me. Even when I'm preparing lessons, sometimes I'll feel that she is there, her presence is there, and it's, it's just, I, I don't know, it's quite special. Um, but tell me, have you had any experiences about that? And I wanted to bring this up because um, sometimes it's just easier to teach our children to honour who they have been named after. Um, I've got a sister who's named her children after her boys after amazing people in scriptures like Ephraim, you know, beautiful names. Um, who else is there? Moroni, Brigham, and I, I'm sure some of you um, uh, in that situation where you'll be named after someone special like that too. I know those names. Um, yeah. So that, I just wanted to touch on that. And that's all we'll talk about on that topic. But tell me if you have any other impressions about that or experiences. Like in the quote, it was like, um, President George Albert Smith's grandfather, deceased grandfather that came to see him about the name, have you had any experiences like that where someone from like your, I don't know, your ancestors or deceased family have come back to see you um, in a dream and they have shared something with you? I have, I actually have. And I, I well, I'll just tell you quickly. Um, please share with me any experiences you've had. I know you've had dreams. I know you're people of dreams. I know you're people of the spirit. Um, but tell me what impressions have you had um, in that way with dreams. I had an uncle who was my most beautiful uncle in the world who, who kind of like raised me and taught me all these things about gospel. He came back to see me in a dream and he told me not to fall less active. Like my cousin was having a cigarette next to me at this great big family gathering and um, my cousin was having a cigarette next to me and she offered it to me. And then I looked around to see if anyone was looking and I thought, why not? Why not? And I turned and I saw my uncle looking straight at me. And in the dream, he just looked at me in a, in a piercing way as to, don't you dare touch that. We need you. We need you. You cannot do that and you cannot fall away. Um, we need you to do a great work. And that was the dream I had of my uncle. 
um, and that's the impression I got. Have you had any experiences like that? Okay, so I'll stop talking and let's go straight into the scriptures. Helen in chapter 6 is us today. Mm, and your only thing to do while well, as we read, the only thing I want you to do is find your own truth. What stands out to you by the Spirit, okay? That's all. Just that. Find your own truth. Um, look for the gold, in other words. Look for the gold. Again, hunting for gold. <sighs> okay, there's quite a, a there's quite a bit in here. Uh, just mark it up, you know, mark up your scriptures um, to what stands out to you, and then try and ponder the things that that do. Stand. Anyway, I'll stop talking because I know I can talk forever. Okay, so uh, head in chapter six. Let's go. Um, chapter heading. The righteous Lamanites preach to the wicked Nephites. Mm. Uh, both peoples prospered during the, an era of peace and plenty. Lucifer, the author of sin, stirs up the hearts of the wicked. And the Gideons and robbers in murder and wickedness. No surprise there, mate. The robbers take over the Nephite government about 29 to 23 BC. Okay? Verse 1, let's go. Now there is something, there's a bit of gold in the bottom of verse 1. There's also a little bit of gold in verse 3. And the reason why I say that it's gold is because these things are what I see today. These are the things that I see today. Okay, let's go. Um, verse 1, and it came to pass that when the 60 and second year of the reign of the judges had ended, all these things had happened, and the Lamanites had become the more part of them a righteous people. Beautiful. And so much that their righteousness in, uh, did exceed that of the Nephites. Yes. Because of their firmness and their steadiness in, their, in, the, in the faith. Beautiful. Um, just a point here. I actually have seen some of these people today. Those, It's like um, truly converted um, Lamanites and... So to me, this is what they look like. They look like they have done something wrong in the past. They have truly converted unto the Lord, changed their ways immensely, and they do not ever want to fall back into their old ways. I have seen some people like that today. And they do seem a bit strong, stronger than those mm, who have not had those experiences before. If that makes any sense to you. Verse 2, For behold, there were many of the Nephites who had become hardened and impenitent and grossly wicked, yes, and so much that they did reject the word of God and all the preaching and prophesying which did come among them. Why is that though? Why have they become hardened and impenitent and grossly wicked? Why? Because these Nephites have always known the gospel. Um, yeah, what comes to your mind about that? Why have they changed? It's a simple solution too. We'll talk about it at the end. Verse 3. And this is gold here. Nevertheless, the people of the church did have great joy because of the conversion of the Lamanites. Yes, beautiful. I, I have seen that today. Uh, yea, because of the church of God, which had been established among them. And they did fellowship one with another and did rejoice one with another. And did have great joy. Yes, I have uh, witnessed these things. Um, uh, the church did have great joy because of the conversion of the Lamanites. Yes, beautiful. Um, so these who have truly converted unto the Lord have come strong. They have strong testimonies. And I'll tell you more as we go. And it came to pass that many of the Lamanites had come down into the land of Zarahemla and did declare unto the people of the Nephites the manner of their conversion and did, did exhort them to faith and repentance. Beautiful. So they, because they are fully converted unto the Lord, all they want to do is share their testimonies and their conversion stories with people. Um, and they, you know, and they did exhort them to faith and, re and repentance. They didn't just say, oh, just come and join the church. No, they didn't say that. And they did exhort. Exhort is kind of like, um, it's preaching, but it's more than that, you know? It's more than just saying it. It's, 
um, exerting yourself um, you know, and sharing your beautiful stories of conversion is it's such a powerful thing. Verse 5, and, and it's an outward expression of an inward, you know, it's an um, outward expression of an inward feeling, you know. They, they love the Lord, they love the gospel, and all they want to do is just share it. Um, verse 5, yea, and many did preach with exceedingly great power and authority, Psst, didn't I just tell you? Unto the bringing down many of them into the depths of humility, beautiful, um, to be the humble followers of God, of God in the land, beautiful. This is the good stuff, people. This is the good stuff. Um, and so, because of the ex beautiful conversion stories, um, they choose to be humble. And as they share, they get stronger in their faith and more humble and more beautiful. Okay, and they are become the Lord's people. Verse 6, And it came to pass that many of the Lamanites did go into the land northward, and also Nephi and Nehi went into the land northward to preach unto the people. And thus ended the sixty and third year. Verse 7, And behold, there was peace in all the land, insomuch that Nephites did go into whatsoever part of the land they would go, they would, whether among the Nephites or the Lamanites. Verse 8. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did also go whithersoever they would, whether it, had, whether it were among the Lamanites or among the Nephites. And thus they, had, they did have free intercourse, one with another, to buy and to sell and to get gain according to their desire. Pause for a second. I did watch an, a docu documentary um, lately about this and how um, the people of that time, they had um, freedom to trade, you know, and they became really resourceful and they could, you know, travel anywhere in the land and and, and just simply trade their goods. And they, yeah, they became... Anyway, I'll just wait till I come to it. Verse 9. And it came to pass that they became exceedingly rich. That's what, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Both the Lamanites and the Nephites, and they did have exceeding plenty of gold and of silver and of all manner of precious metals, both in the land south and in the land north. Verse 10. Now the land south was called Lehi, and the land north was called Mulek which was after the son of Zedekiah. For the Lord did bring Mulek into the land north, and Lehi into the land south. Yes, that's true. Uh, verse 11, And behold, there was all manner of gold in both these lands, and of silver, and of precious ore of every kind. And there were also curious workmen, who did work all kinds of ore, and did refine it, and thus they did become rich. Um, so from verse 11, she talks about the skills that they had for trade and they did become rich verse 12 they did raise grain in abundance both in the north and in the south and they did flourish exceedingly both in the north and in the turn the page in the south and they did multiply and wax exceedingly strong in the land they did raise many flocks and herds, yea, many fatlings. Um, so they're not suffering, are they? They're doing very well. They are so blessed. And the Lord has blessed them. Now let's see what happens next. Verse 13. Behold, their woman did toil and spin and make all manner of cloth and fine twined linen and cloth of every kind to clothe their nakedness. And thus the sixty and fourth year did pass away in peace, verse 14. And in the sixty and fifth year, they did also have great joy and peace. Yea, much preaching and many prophecies concerning that which was to come. And thus passed away the sixty and fifth year, verse 15. And it came to pass in the sixty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, behold, Caesarum, Caesarum was murdered by an unknown hand as he sat upon the judgment seat. So Caesar is the chief judge. Um, what else does it say here? And it came to pass that in the same year that his son, who had been appointed by the people, 
in his stead was also mur murdered. And thus ended the sixty and sixth year. Verse sixteen, and it came, and in the commencement of the sixty and seventh year, the people people began to grow exceedingly wicked again. Hmm. Why is that? Why is that? Why did they become wicked? Let's find out in the next verse. Verse 17. For behold, the Lord had blessed them so long with the riches of the world that they had not been stirred up to anger, to wars, nor to bloodshed. Therefore they began to set their hearts upon their riches. So they began to set their hearts upon their riches, and this is where we come into it. We also do the same thing. We are most likely to do the same thing. Um, so how did the wickedness begin? Because they, the people started to, oh, they're just too, uh, too blessed. And then they began to, they were good at trading and stuff. They had lots of gold, silver and um, provisions. But then they, they began to, you know, like my seminary kids say, you get a bit prideful. Puffed up in your pride, big head. And what happens when you get a big head? Let's find out. Yea, they began to seek to get gain, that they might be lifted up one above another. Pride. Um, therefore they began to commit secret murders and to rob and, and to plunder, that they might get gain. It's all for gain, personal gain. Verse 18, And now behold, those murderers and plunderers were a band who had been formed by Kush, Kuman, no surprise there, and Gadianton, and now it had come to pass that there were many, even among the Nephites of Gideon's band. But behold, they were more numerous among the more wicked part of the Lamanites. Um, so they haven't dwindled, have they, in number? They have actually increased in number in their secret society. And you'll, you'll see too as we go through this, that, you know, how destructive... Um, they they are because of the secret way that they operate, you know. Um, oh, anyway, you'll find out. There's some more coming about them. Um, more wicked part of the Lamanites, and they were called Gadiantans, Gadiantans robbers, and murderers. Verse nineteen, and it and it was they who murdered the chief judge, Caesarum, and his son while in the judgment seat, and behold. They were not found mm, because they're so secret and they know how to get away with stuff. Verse 20, And now it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that there were robbers among them, they were exceedingly sorrowful and they did use every means in their power to destroy them on the face of the earth. So they did try to get rid of them. Um, very destructive people, very destructive. Verse 21, but behold, Satan did stir up the hearts of the more part of the Nephites, insomuch that they did unite with those bands of robbers and did enter into a covenant and their oaths that they would protect and serve one another in whatsoever difficult circumstances they should be placed. That they should not suffer for their murders and their plunderings and their stealings. Secret combinations, people. Um, verse 22, and it came to pass that they did have their signs, yea, their secret signs, and their secret words, and this, that they might be, they might distinguish a brother who had entered into the covenant, that whatsoever, whatsoever wickedness his brother should do, he should not be injured by his brother, nor by those who did belong to his band, who had taken this covenant. Um, so they all honoured it. Um, they're all in on it. <laughs> um, Gideon robbers, verse 23. And thus they might murder and plunder and steal and com commit whoredoms and all manner of wickedness contrary to the laws of their country and also the laws of their God. Verse 24. And whosoever of those who belong to their band should reveal unto the, the world of their wickedness and their abominations should be tried not according to 
the laws of the country, but according to the laws of their wickedness, which had been given by Gideon and Kishkumen. Verse 25, Now behold, it is these secret oaths and covenants which Alma commanded his son should not go forth unto the world, lest they should be a means of bringing down the people unto destruction. Yes. Verse 26, Now behold, those secret paths and covenants did not come from uh, come forth unto Gideon from the re records which were delivered unto Helaman. But behold, they were put into the heart of Gideon by that same being who, who did entice our first period. So ah, here we go. To partake of the forbidden fruit. Okay, so the, the, these enticings didn't come from nowhere. It didn't come from them. It came from the source who is, you know, it is the person who did entice our first parents. And then you listen to the list of other things in his uh, CV. <laughs> These are his credentials. All right, listen. Verse 27. Yay. That same being who did plot with Cain, that if he would murder his brother Abel, it should be not known, uh, it should not be known unto the world. And he did plot with Cain and his followers from that time forth. Verse 28. And also, it is the same being who put it into the hearts of people to build a tower sufficiently high that they might get to heaven. And it was the same being who led on the, t uh, on the people who came from the tower into this land. Okay, so we're talking about the Tower of Babel. It's the same person. So on his list of uh, um, experience on the CV, one, he tempted our first parents. Two, he told Cain, get rid of your brother. Um, three, he convinced people to build a tower to make it all the way to heaven. These, This is the same person. And today, what are the things that are on his list of credentials now? What's in his CV now? Like, what are the plunderings and murderings and things that he's done today? Many. Many, 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 many. There's so many. Okay. Um, but let's carry on. Um, who led on the people who came from the tower into this land, who spread the works of darkness and abominations over all the face of the land, and he still does, until he dragged the people down to an entire destruction and to an everlasting hell. Yes, he did. Um, and these people who tried to build that tower, Tower of Babel, they ended up in this place in the Americas. And what happened to them? Um, to an entire destruction, that's where that, what happened to them, and to an everlasting hell. Verse 29, yea, it is the same being who put it into the heart of Ganyantin to still carry on the work of darkness, and the secret murder still happens today. And he has brought it forth from the beginning of man, even down to this time, see, even down to this time, um, even down to this time, verse 30, and behold, it is he who is the author of all sin. And behold, he doth carry on his works of darkness. He does. He does. Um, just this week, I posted something about pride and contention. And contention is truly of the devil. Um, and what I believe is that any kind of contention that you see is not of God you know all good comes from God any contention you see comes from him Satan and here's the is it like this is what we don't understand especially the young people I used to teach they they think they can overcome Satan they put themselves in harm's way and they think they can overcome him but what we need to understand about him is he's he is an expert at what he does he is a professional at what he does he knows exactly what he's doing and he's been doing it since the beginning of all time. And if you think you can compete with that, well, think again. <laughs> Don't put yourself in harm's way. Honestly, you know, just stay clear from it. Stay right away. I'm going to share something with you later on that I thought um, it kind of relates to this, 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 this. And how Satan can just push your buttons. It can, like, trigger you in a way that you lose your, your head. 
and you just do stupid things, people. Please pay attention. Um, and secret murder and doth hand down their plots and their oaths and their covenants and their plans of awful wickedness from generation to generation. Yes, a generational sin. According as, and it's just that, it's really the traditions of our fathers. Sometimes we carry it on uh, from generation to According as he can get hold upon the hearts of the children of man. So he has no power over us if we don't give it to him. Um, so he can only influence us. So it says here, um, according as he can get hold upon the hearts of the children of men. I mean, he really does know how to convince us and deceive us. He does. He does know. He's, he's an expert at it. And he does know how to entice us. He, and look at our young people today. They get enticed with so many things like music. They get enticed with it. They'll sing the songs to a uh, the words to a song that they know is completely not right, but because they love the tune, they know they just go hard and go for it. I mean, they're not the only ones. Us older um, adults, we do the same thing. Like even when we watch uh, things on media, social media, sometimes we just justify it and we say, "Oh no, it's okay." Like I said, contention is of the devil. Stay clear from it. Whatever it is, to, don't let it affect you. <laughs> And uh, don't let it trigger you, eh? Be careful, because he really knows. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. Um, and all he needs to do is get a hold upon the hearts of the children of men. Um, which includes yourself. Which includes your children. Which includes people you love. Um, your friends. Be careful. He, he is very smart. Um, verse 31. And now behold, he got... Great hold upon the hearts of the Nephites. I mean, these Nephites, they have beautiful testimonies. They truly come converted unto the Lord. But here we go. He got a hold of their hearts. That's us, people. He can do the same to us. Yea, and so much that they had become exceedingly wicked. Yea, the more part of them that had turned out of the way of righteousness. And sometimes you think, oh gosh, it's just too hard to be good. It's just too hard. It's much easier to be, you know, to do whatever you want to do. And so you do one little thing stupid. And then before you know, you open the floodgates to all the excuses in the world to, to do things that you shouldn't be doing. And you know you shouldn't be doing. But yet you still give power um, to Satan to take hold of your heart. Um, because it is hard. Yeah, it's hard. It is hard. But... You know, and I've been thinking this week, if you don't stand for something, you'll stand for nothing. You know, be firm in your faith. That's what I just, I mean, I can talk. I'm, I'm not perfect at all. And I do fall for stupid things as well. Um, but I, at least I recognize it and I try quickly to, to overcome it and repent of it quickly while I can. Instead of putting myself into this deep mess that I just cannot even go back. And before you know it, he's got a hold of he's got a hold on you. Um, like I said, he's very smart. Prevention is better than cure. Uh, the more part of them that had turned out of the way of righteousness and did trample under their feet, and the commandments of God did turn unto their own, and did build upon themselves idols of their gold and their silver. There you go. They're building. So why are they falling? Why are they wicked? Why have they become wicked? Because they have allowed it to happen. Um, and that's something for us to understand. And because they have allowed it to uh, happen and they have opened the floodgates and like, let's just do whatever we, we can now. Because we're at that point where we have fallen. So let's just do everything. Um, and there's a scripture that comes to mind, eat, drink and be merry, for tomorrow we die. So you only live once. Um, and sometimes we can have that attitude when we just you know, commit one sin. Um, open the floodgates, let's do it all. Uh, what else have we got? And so they start building idols and things like that. And so we can do the same thing too. We we can make the mistake of doing the same thing and building our own idols. Whatever those idols are, it could be just like doing, uh, reoffending. can be simple things, you know. It's not the, 
It's not the big things you want to worry about. It's the small, subtle ways that Saturn can get a hold of you. And so it might be things like, um, I don't know, um, not keeping the Sabbath holy, something like that. It could be um, just, just, just anything, hey, honestly. It could be anything. Um, here we go. And it did come to pass. And it came to pass that all these iniquities did come unto them in the space of not many years, and so much that a more part of it had come unto them the sixty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, thirty-three. And they did grow in their iniquities in the sixty and eighth year also to the great sorrow and lam lamentation of the righteous. Um, it is a sorrowful thing when you see your brethren uh, fall away, people you love. Verse 34, but at the same time, you have to understand that they are making that choice for themselves. Okay? Uh, verse 34, and thus we see the Nephites did begin to dwindle in unbelief and grow in wickedness and abominations while the Lamanites began to grow exceedingly in the knowledge of their God. Beautiful. Um, yea, they did begin to keep his statutes and commandments and to walk in the truth and right, uprightness before him. Pause here for a second. I don't think it's our job, um, you know, one job. I don't think it's our job to, to um, look at the sin of others. I don't think it is, you know. Whether people have done things wrong and then come back again into the gospel... I mean, that's between them and the Lord. Really, it's not for us to judge um, at all. Um, it's not for us to judge. And there is no one better than anyone else. I mean, I think we all sin differently. I understand that. We're, we're not perfect. None of us are. Um, and I think we should be careful if we get ourselves into a mindset where we think we haven't done anything wrong. Um you know, just best be humble and just keep it to yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it's something to be very wary of, um, judging others, uh, whether they are more righteous or not. You know, that, that's not for us to um, point fingers at. And I think we, um, I don't know, we're all at different levels of understanding. Um, okay, so let's go back. And grow in wickedness and abominations while the Lamanites began to grow exceedingly in the knowledge of their God. It's just it's just like back and forwards all the time when it comes to the Nephites and Lamanites. You know, they're jumping ship and then vice versa. Yea, they did begin to keep his statutes and commandments and walk in the truth and uprightness before him. Verse 35, and thus we see. When a woman puts this in here, thus we see. He wants us to see something. And thus we see this, that the Spirit of the Lord began to withdraw from the Nephites because of the wickedness and the hardness of their hearts. True, absolutely true and beautiful. Verse 36. And thus we see that the Lord began to pour out His Spirit up, upon the Lamanites. Yes, because of their easiness and willingness to believe in His Word. I just don't... <sighs> This is absolutely true. Verse 35 and 36, let's come back to it later. 37, and it came to pass that the Lamanites did hunt the band of robbers of Gadianton, and they did preach the word of God among the more wicked part of them, and so much that the band of robbers was utterly destroyed from among the Lamanites. Verse 38, and it came to pass, on the other hand, that the Nephites did build them up and support them, beginning at the more wicked part of them until they had overspread all of the land of the Nephites and had seduced the more part of the righteous until they had come down to believe in their works and partake of their spoils and to join with them in their secret murders and combinations. Verse 39, there's some gold here. And thus they did obtain the sole management of the government and so much that they did trample under their feet and smite and rend and turn their backs upon the poor and the meek and the humble followers of God. You know, our, our standards quickly change when we make 
um, those kinds of of decisions that lower our discipleship you know oh, no let me rephrase that um, our standards do change when we allow them to and and we are swayed and this is the consequence of what happens when you are uh, lose faith and for some reason, something has, has caused for that happen, for this to happen in your life. You know, your faith has fallen for some reason, okay? And these are just some of the consequences that can happen because of that. Uh, verse 40, and thus we see, here we go, something else he wants us to see, that they were in an awful state and ripening for an everlasting destruction. They're getting ready to be destroyed. And they're doing that on their own accord. And, well, they're allowing it. They, they have made the choice to do it. That's what they choose. Um, be careful. It can be us. It can be us. Verse 41. And remember when you make these decisions for change in a not good way, you, you are, there is a rippling effect to, to it. You know, it will ripple on, trickle on down your posterity. Um and so forth. Um, verse 41, and it came to pass that thus the end, uh, that it came to pass that thus ended the 60 and 8th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. Okay. Um, so that's our element six, actually, that's the last chapter for this week. But we do have something to, to do tomorrow. I've got um, sisters coming um, tomorrow and my guest. Um, I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell you later. Anyway, so this is our, our chapter. What what truth did you find interesting? What did you think? Well, did anything stand out to you? <laughs> you know, what stand, stood out to me is just all the wickedness of the Nephites. You know, they're supposed to be a tr strong people. Um... And see, you can never judge a book by its cover. You, you never say that someone is perfect and they don't do anything wrong yet. Everyone does it. And this is history telling us that, you know, it is in us to do this kind of thing. It is us. Um, that this can happen today. Um, so some beautiful scriptures in there. Okay, let's just go to our thing. So I'd like to know what... What verses stood out to you, or what truth? What did you find interesting? Um, what have I got here? I did say I'll come back to verses 35. And thus, we see that the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, began to withdraw from the Nephites because of the wickedness, the hardness of their hearts. And thus, we see that the Lord began to pour out His Spirit upon the Lamanites because of their. easiness and willingness to believe and also down the bottom in 39 uh, uh, and and they did turn their backs upon the poor and the meek and the humble followers of God and thus we see that they were in an awful state and ripening for everlasting destruction I think we see a lot of this stuff happening today. We see a lot of contention um, in the media, especially. I see a lot of it. And sometimes it's, it does really annoy you. There's some of the stuff that people, especially some of the stuff that people post on social media. Come on now. Why does it, you know, gosh. Um, anyway, I wrote some notes here. People are being changed today by the opinions of others, like someone will post something and think, what? And then just react. And just in a, a moment of anger, just lose it. And this is how we can be swayed from our faith. And in Helaman 5.12, it does say, you know, I'll come to that scripture later on, but I'll just go through these notes first. Uh, we do need to understand that we are not perfect and 
the opinions of others, it's their opinions. So, like, let them have their opinions. Um, it's not hurting you. <laughs> and sometimes I think we, we get the idea that we can change people. We cannot. What they believe is what they believe. And you can say something, yes, but at your own risk, at your own choice. Um, but there's always consequences to our actions. And um, I'll go on and I'll share something with you later on. Uh, let me go through this first, though. Uh, be humble. It's a, it's, there is peace in being humble. There is, it is a better way to be humble. To be able to lower yourself um, in any situation. Um, Lamanites were righteous. Yes, the Lamanites were more righteous than the Nephites. And, um, you know, that's just a, 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 maybe a lesson to show us too that, you know, never judge a book by its cover. Just because someone sins, it doesn't mean that that's the end of, you know, that, you know, that is the end of it. It's not. People can change. I always believe that. People can change, and I always try to look for the good in others. Yes, they make mistakes. Yes, they're not perfect, but I always try to see the good in others. Because there is good in everybody, and there is evil in everybody. Um... Yeah, and we are not perfect, so we're still learning on the journey. But when someone is is like in a position where they are not making right choices, but they want to, and you know how to make that happen, and you just sit back and do nothing about it, then, you know, I think there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. Uh, okay, where am I up to? Hmm. Okay, it's time. Okay. Um, I am truly amazed at the example of those who are truly converted unto the Lord. And I've met a lot of people along my journey in the gospel. Who I've seen some miraculous things happen. I've seen some beautiful things happen in the lives of others who just change. And it's just from having a desire to change. So they've, they've like they've changed their lives completely. Like maybe they were alcoholics before, but they, they choose not to do that anymore. They completely changed. I know my uncle who raised me in the in the church, he used to drink before. Um, and he made a complete change. He became a, a bishop. And See, it's a personal thing to have your testimony, and it's between you and the Lord. And it, it's more meaningful to you when you really have a desire for change. Like yesterday, it talked about you cry unto the Lord um, for repentance. You cry unto the Lord until you can actually feel Him, you know, with that, uns you know, with that, oh, what is it, unspeakable joy. That's what you're looking for and change. And everyone is entitled to it. And not everyone is perfect. And it's a daily thing for, for some of us. Yeah, but I've seen some um, people who are just beautiful examples to me. You know, beautiful. And I never judge a book of, of, by its cover because of it. I know that people can change. And it's because of their lack of understanding sometimes that they haven't made the change yet. But there is always hope in Christ that you can change. I, I believe that. Man, if I can change from my crazy life of unbelievable sin then oh, anybody can change okay so uh, me raising them okay so i was raised in the gospel but i didn't understand a lot i didn't understand the the, the doctrines i just like just you know so like some of us just told go to church and and go to your class and you don't really understand stuff when you know sometimes being raised in the church um but i came across I, I was pondering the scripture, it's found in Joshua, Joshua 24, 15, and it says, Choose you this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, I will, we will serve the Lord. Um, so what it does come down to, what do you choose? Um, and for me, it, my life was just so, it was, it was a, a good life, but uh, I just always felt guilty. I always felt the shame of sin. When I saw my family members at gatherings and that, I knew I was doing things wrong and I couldn't look them in the face sometimes um, because I knew that they knew I was doing something wrong. 
and I was kind of like judging myself really um, yeah um, it was never a good feeling when I felt that way I just just felt the weight of sin uh, number three it says here Belinda Belinda always says choose your love and love your choice and um, it is about doing that loving your choice loving what you decide to do uh, loving your actions you know the things that you choose to do by action and um, yeah if you have any thoughts about that let me know drop it in the comments um right now i'm going to share with you an experience that i had just last night actually uh let me just read this here stay in of your oh okay stay in control <laughs> all right <laughs> i think i'm talking to myself eh? um so i posted recently a post that i saw about donald trump and i don't follow the negative things of anybody um and he seems to be a um a target at the moment in in the public eye i don't follow it and i don't i don't choose to it just makes me feel miserable when i find out when i hear negative things about anybody and even him so i saw this post and it was um how he um he understands the gift of life and how it comes from god and i just thought that was beautiful um, just the, the words that he spoke in that quote. So I, I just shared and I thought, good on you, mate. Good on you. And those are the same qualities that I have. So I shared it. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't follow it or anything. And then just last night when I went to bed, <laughs> I saw someone post. It's actually my husband's family. Um, and I don't blame him for it. That's his choice. He wanted to say that. He posted, uh, really... And he laughed at my comment, really. He laughed at my post. And when I saw it, I thought, that's a bit weird that he would do that. And I thought, hmm, ah, uh, okay. And I was thinking, well, I could get a little bit irate here and get a bit grumpy with him doing that to me. And um, I just thought, oh, okay. Um, but I was a little frustrated by it, I must admit. I was frustrated, but I thought, okay, now it must be bedtime. Um, and I just, I didn't worry about it. In the morning, I woke up and I told my husband, did you know that so-and-so said this on my post? And I, um, and he, he just said, he said a few things about it, but he didn't get to think about it. Um, well, the thing is that I could, the lesson in it is I could have got mad and just went all crazy about it. And at the end of the day, what would that do? I can't control him and what he says. Yes, it's a little disrespectful that he posted on my post. I tell you, if my kids saw it, they'll just, they'll get annoyed with him for doing that. Because I'm not that kind of person that looks for opposition or an argument or disagreement. No, I'm not that kind of person. Um, I know my daughter loves disagreeing with people. <laughs> you know, she will have a go at him. Um, but as I can't control others and I choose not to, um, let it get to me. So it comes back to what Belinda said, choose your love and love your choice. Love the choice that you make daily. Love the choices. Um, and you'll just wonder, this whole chapter was about, um, how the Nephites had fallen away. How could they fall away when they had beautiful testimonies of all these great fathers, their forefathers were great faithful men. How could they fall away? And what does happen? I mean, wow, well, at the end of the day, they were human people. Um, at the end of the day, they're just like us. And we will make choices. Some of them will not be good choices. Um, but to help us make better choices, let's go to Helaman 5.12. And I'll close on this note, okay? So in Helaman 5.12, it says, uh, da, 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 here we go. And now my sons, remember, remember, that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that you must build your foundation. 
Why? Because of this. Now when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe because of the rock upon which ye are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. Beautiful way. Uh, so the lesson here for us today is do everything in your power to strengthen yourself, to build your foundation on Christ, which is a sure thing. Um, that if you build upon, ye shall not fall. Um, and even if you do fall and make mistakes, you'll get yourself back up quickly. I absolutely believe that. I mean, I, for me personally, I can only speak of myself. I make a trillion mistakes and um, because of the, of the foundation which I have built upon Christ, I know quickly that those things that I have done are wrong and I look at myself because I understand the consequences of what will happen when I make bad mistakes um, and the effects of making those mistakes. I get onto it quickly and I do everything I can possible to repent. And I also see, because I built my foundation on Christ, I see the danger ahead. And when I see it coming, I do everything in my power to ponder my scriptures, to say my prayers and to just do what the Lord will have me do the best I can. I'm not perfect, like I said, I'm not perfect. I fight constantly with Satan daily, um, but I will not let him win. No way, I will not let him win. Mm, I've been there before and I'm not going back there again. No way. And I don't want that for my family too. Um, so I'm a watchful mother and I'm doing the best I can. Um, just in closing, I'd like to bear you my testimony. I am grateful for these beautiful teachings. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to share. Um, and I just love these beautiful scriptures that help us stay on track. And, you know, just like a light, it just like enlightens our minds to the things that we need to do. And that to me is the, the power of God. That's the power of the Spirit to help us stay on, on the right path as best we can. Um, I bear my testimony that these things that we have spoken of today are indeed true. And if we do our best to apply them in our daily lives, then we will see the promise that we shall not fall. Um, if we build our faith in Christ, He is beautiful. Get to know him and you will see um, how beautiful he is. Um, I'm just grateful. Um, and I express my gratitude to Heavenly Father and our Savior Jesus Christ. And I love you all. And I say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, everybody. Have a, a good rest of the day. And when you come in, um, later on then just please say hello and um, I'll say a prayer our most precious Heavenly Father we thank thee for this wonderful opportunity we have had to come before thee we thank thee Father for thy mercy and thy love for us and uh, forgive us Father for our many wrongdoings and please help us to strengthen ourselves in faith to overcome the adversity in our lives and help us to be mindful of him and Help us to strengthen ourselves um, that we may be able to protect our, ourselves and our, our families and um, keep Satan at bay. And we're grateful, Father, for this opportunity we have to come together and edify each other. We're grateful for um, all our blessings and pray that they will be with us at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. We'll see you later. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. All right. And actually, we're going to have a, um, it'll be around 11 o'clock. Yeah, just before 12 tomorrow. 
Okay, we'll see you later. Bye.